The other big story on Saturday night. Texans running back Lamar Miller is believed to have torn his ACL. That's according to an NFL Network report on Houston's second play from scrimmage against the Cowboys. Miller took a hit at the knee from Cowboys defensive tackle Malik Collins went down in pain immediately. A helmet to the knee there. The team will likely now turn to former Browns running back Duke Johnson as their feature back who was traded to the Texans earlier this month. All right, so we welcome in Pete Prisco and Jamie Eisenberg. And uh, Pete, I'll come to you first here because uh, this Texans team um, won the division last year in the AFC South. They started 0-3. Uh, Lamar Miller now dealing with a torn ACL. Uh, what do you make of this and your reaction now to the Lamar Miller's injury? I mean, it's you lose your starting running back. That's a big hit to a team that uh, needs to run the football to take the pressure off Deshaun Watson behind a bad offensive line. And, you know, they have a, a, they had a horrible offensive line a year ago, and they thought they were going to improve it this year. But so far in the preseason, it hasn't been very good. And so it's concerning. You lose Miller. You don't have a lot of depth behind him. Uh, you know, they signed Duke Johnson. I mean, they traded for Duke Johnson because they thought he was going to be a third down back. Now he's going to have to do more, and they're going to have to get something out of those young kids. I wouldn't be shocked to see them make a move to get a running back, uh, may, you know, trade for a running back again, or maybe get somebody off of somebody else's roster when they make the cutdowns because uh, they have big problems back there. Jamie, what do you think? Can they rely on Duke Johnson or they need to look elsewhere? I think they can rely on Duke Johnson, but they definitely need to look, look elsewhere. You know, there are going to be a lot of veteran guys that are going to come available soon that they may want to kick the tires on. Carlos Hyde seems to be on his way out of Kansas City. He makes some sense. You know, he's bounced around the league over the last two seasons, but, you know, he could still be a guy that gives you some semblance of a sort of lead type of guy. I think it could be a situation where Buffalo gets rid of one of their guys. I don't think it's going to be LaShawn McCoy at this point, but it wouldn't be surprising if either Frank Gore or TJ Yeldon are let go, just given what they have in Devin Singletary. Giovanni Bernard could be somebody that's on his way out in Cincinnati. I think you see Kenneth Dixon let go in Baltimore. And Akeem, we talked about this earlier when we first discussed the Lamar Miller injury. Maybe Adrian Peterson, if the Washington Redskins want to just stick with Darius Geis and their young guys in the backfield. But like Pete said, they could also explore a trade. I don't think they give up anything big like they did to get through Johnson. Of course, they can't. So maybe a sixth or seventh round pick to get somebody off of somebody else's roster just to make sure they have somebody that they like. But again, there are going to be some veteran guys that come available soon. And that's probably the route that the Texans go. Because while Duke Johnson, I think, could do okay in the role of a lead guy, like Pete said, they didn't bring him in to be a lead guy. He's more of a third down guy at this point of his career. Pete, what makes most sense to you in this situation? Lean on Duke Johnson or, or go and make a deal? Well, having talked. Well, having spent time and talked to Bill O'Brien during camp when they were working out with the Packers, one of the things that we talked about was the, you know, there was reports out there about them going to get Melvin Gordon, and that's just not something they were going to go do. They felt that the running back position was something you could do by committee, and they wanted to get an air back. That's one of the guys they went out and got. Remember, he was in New England. They had those backs that could come out of the backfield and catch the football. I call them air backs. They could do a lot of different things. That's why he went out and got Duke Johnson. So, uh, from that standpoint, I think they have that guy. Now they just have to find maybe one of the young guys can step in. You can find young runners. I mean, we've seen it time and time again. I say it all. You can find them anywhere. So maybe one of the young runners can step in and, and give them something that Lamar Miller could, not what exactly what he did, but close to it, and they'll be okay. Jamie, what does this mean for the Texans' big picture in terms of uh, what's going to happen this season when they lose their starting running back? I don't think it changes really the entire outlook of this franchise. Look, Lamar Miller has been good. He hasn't been great. And like Pete said, they'll find some way to replace his production. This really is about the offensive line taking the Texans to a different height. If the offensive line can be good, then the Texans offense can still be one of the best in the NFL. Because when you talk about, forget about the running backs, the quarterback and the receiving core is among the best in the league. They have arguably the best receiver in DeAndre Hopkins. They have one of the top five quarterbacks in Deshaun Watson. And then you take a look at the secondary receivers. Will Fuller, a great deep guy. Kiki QT, look, last year in the six games that he played, can be a very competent slot receiver. You know the defense is going to be good, especially if Clowney's on point and playing like he typically can, and J.J. Watt stays healthy. So this is still a very good team, but they don't have that special player in the backfield. Not that Lamar Miller was that guy, but they probably are not going to get that type of production unless Duke Johnson just all of a sudden comes out of nowhere and shows us something that he's never seen before. So kind of similar to what we've been talking about with Andrew Luck. The division now, I think, looks, if you're talking about who's the favorite, if Jacksonville doesn't suffer a significant injury and Nick Foles proves to be, which I think a lot of people expect to be, that much better than Blake Bortles, 
And I think Jacksonville is the team you look at and say, they're the best team in the division, and I think Houston will be chasing them. That'd be a pretty interesting story considering what now is happening in Indianapolis with Andrew Luck retiring, who they came into the season as the favorites to win the division, and now perhaps it's the Jaguars who went 5-11 and last season, and they go from worst to first because of a retirement and a major injury to a running back in the division. Pete Prisco, Jamie Eisenberg joining us here on Monster, uh, a monster night where we have major news here on CBS Sports HQ. Men, thank you.